All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in the studio this evening. And tonight we're going to paint this uh, onto here, which is wonderful, lovely Point Bouchon in Montana de Oro. Uh, it's a little place, oh, a few miles south of where I live in a, in a nice park along the Pacific shore. Uh, it's beautiful. These are like just these big monolithic stone structures that stick out of the water. Kind of everybody calls them Pacific Stonehenge. Uh, I'm going to get started today with my King Art brushes. The paints that I'm using are my M. Graham paints in the palette I've been using for quite a long time. The paper that I'm using is Strathmore 400 series paper. And, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to mix up a really light cerulean blue for my sky here. Thirsty is here. Welcome, Thirsty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Just going to mix up a little bit of this cerulean. I want this really light. It's Maybe I'm going to put a little touch of uh, Payne's Gray in here to dull this down a little bit. Natalie is here. Hello, Natalie. Thank you for joining. Uh, and I'm going to turn my, turn my page over. And uh, it's not uh, an overcast sky, I wouldn't say. We get a few overcast, uh, really overcast days here and in, in where this picture was taken at. But uh, this isn't one of them. This might be a little haze here and there, but that would be about it. So I'm just going to really lightly paint in my sky. I'm trying very hard. To keep my horizon line pretty level, I would hate for the ocean to run off in one direction or another. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to make um, nice clouds or anything like that. I'm hoping this is gonna be really, really faint when it dries up. Not much to it at all. There we go. That that's my skyline. Right there, it's just a straight line, straight across, except for this little bit here where our hill kind of reaches in front of it. Uh, and now I've got to kind of wait for that to uh, dry a little bit, so I've got to move on to something else. Oh, ZC Creations is here. Hello, Natalie. This reminds me... Oh, the reminders from Discord really helped me remember. Oh, okay, good. And Shannon is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, while I'm waiting for my sky up here on the top to dry, I think I'm going to drop down and start to put some color on the rocks and on the shoreline here. And a lot of the rocks here along the coastline at the very top kind of have an ochre color. A minty minting tin is here. Howdy to you, minty. Thank you for stopping by. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of color here. Some nice um, yellow ochre. I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt umber into that. And then uh, I'm going to paint kind of the tops of some of these rocks with this color. And as we move down the rock face, you can see from the picture whoop, over there, it gets darker pretty quickly. So actually, so what I, what I should do is I'm going to mix up a little bit. I'll do it here. A little bit of sepia with a little Payne's gray in it. That's going to be a nice dark mixture. I'll make that nice and soupy also. And maybe we'll throw even a little bit of that yellow ochre in there. Just about like that. Um, let's see. We're in this for a little bit here. I should say, uh, anybody, everybody who's here, I think you've been here before. If you have any questions, please... Please throw them out there. I'd love to hear what your questions are. As always, they can be questions about this piece of art. They can be questions about uh, other pieces of my art. They can be questions about uh, art in general or why I'm painting this, why I'm painting this a certain way, um, how I decide on an image, anything you want to throw out there. Right, I think is is pretty much fair game. So, if you've got a question, please throw it out there. It's the questions that really make uh, painting 
on a live stream. A lot of fun, so don't be shy with any questions that you might have. And as I'm doing this, as I'm drawing this color down a little bit, I'm being mindful, and now in the past I've, I've done this, I'm being mindful not to um, make this too dark. I'm trying to keep this pretty light uh, so that I can differentiate from the foreground, these rocks in the foreground, which I'm going to make darker, and uh, I, want them to, I want them to stick out a lot more. So I, I've got to keep these... You know, a nice, rich, full color, but still a bit lighter. Uh, Thirsty, any plans to <laughs> stream on Twitch? I do have plans. I would love to. Um, I just It has just happened that... Um, now, hold on a second. I need to look at my reference photo. I know I've got an empty space in here. Here's my empty space. It uh, just so happens that I've been doing a lot of things on the weekend with the family, not to mention my normal bit of yard work and whatnot. And it's just made it a bit difficult to get on on the weekends. There's a lot going on here. I say there's a lot going on here. I know everybody's got a lot going on uh, everywhere. I don't mean to say that I have more going on than anybody else, but right now it seems, it seems like I've got a lot going on. <laughs> Uh, I keep meaning I, I I want to get on on Twitch. Just haven't I haven't gotten I haven't found uh, time when I can sit down and think I can do it uninterrupted. I've got my, I've got my I've got um what am I trying to say? I've got a a drawing done for my next uh, painting I want to do on Twitch. And, well, uh, to that end, I'm right over here. I've got a little chair right over here. I've probably got. Who I don't know, four or five paintings uh, partially done that uh, I could probably do anyways and finish up and that would help me get those off of off of my table. But uh, to answer your question, yes, I would love to. I'm just trying to find the time to do it. And it's, uh, it's seemingly <laughs> it's harder than I thought it was going to be. All right, I got, um, let's see, am I got this right? Let me, I need to flip over to my reference photo here. This is, seems kind of right. Just paint right on through here. And at this point of the game, at this point of the game, I'm really hoping I can see my pencil lines when I'm done putting this color on. But I'm not worried. I want these rocks, if you look at the rocks on that, reference photo. If you go to my Discord channel and grab this reference photo, you can see that a lot of this looks kind of like it's just one big rock structure, and it's it's hard to tell where one of these um, I don't know, monolithic rocks, I'm not exactly sure what you call these, where one of these starts and another one ends. So I'm not that concerned about uh, painting them individually, I just I want to make sure I get some nice uh, colors on here and get the colors on in the way I want them to be. I think that's a bit more important than um, than getting uh, the exact color on uh, on each individual rock. So that's that's why as I'm doing this, I'm just I'm I'm not being too concerned about where I'm putting this. Ooh, I'll mix a little bit of this neutral tint in here. Neutral tint and a little Payne's gray. That'll make a nice rock color. And I just want to get all of these wet. I should say, I, sh I should say, I, I just said I'm not worried too much about uh, getting all individual colors on here. And then you see me... Uh, painting right next to each other with some two different colors. So uh, just like right here, I, if you can see that color differentiation, yes, I, I am uh, trying to get 
somewhat of a different color on there, but I'm not too concerned. Um, if I get more of one or less of another like that, kind of reminds me of Stonehenge. Yeah, they call this Pacific Stonehenge, or some people out here call it Pacific Stonehenge. I should say, I'll tell you a little bit about the park. The park is called uh, Montana de Oro State Park. And it's, it's kind of an interesting little area. You've got to drive through the town that sits just north of it. The town is called Los Osos, and you go through Los Osos. Oh, look, I've forgotten some. Back here, maybe? Yeah, a little bit back here. You drive through Los Osos to get to Montana de Oro, and that's all well and good. You get there, and there's not, <laughs> honestly, there's not a whole lot there. The only thing that's there are some trails, a little campground, and a lot of turnouts on the road where the surfers go, and... Uh, park their cars so that they can get out into some good surf. Uh, because just north of this spot, a ways is some of the best surf around here. I don't surf. I don't. I'm taking their word on it. Uh, but you get you get here and <clears throat> you you drive in about uh, I don't know about two miles, and there's a parking lot, and you can park at the parking lot. And get out, and you see how how high this is on this side. If you look at that reference photo, there's a big sheer cliff. The whole trail uh, for about five miles from that parking lot really is about I don't know 30 to 40 feet, sometimes higher than that, above the Pacific Ocean. And there are these crazy rock structures that not only um, extend out from the uh, from the rock wall, from the cliff face. But uh, there are other ones like this where there's just these giant freestanding rocks and you look at them and you go, how or why did those ever get there? Um, I have no idea how they got there, but they're there and they're there all up and down the trail. And then you take the trail all the way to the end and uh, you run into... A nuclear power plant. <laughs> literally, literally, there's one road that goes right through the whole park that you can take, and uh, you get to a certain point, and everything's blocked off. You can't go any further. There's gates and a guard and whatnot, and that's where the nuclear power plant is. So, in the midst of this little piece of, I don't, know, I don't know what to call it, a piece of heaven, but this really interesting little um, park out there. Oh, Michelle is here. Welcome, Michelle. Uh, right out where this, really, it's a beautiful place. Uh, on sunny days, on uh, foggy days, it always presents itself a little differently. It's a wonderful place out there. At the back end of it, this big, <laughs> big nuclear power plant. Uh, I think it's really Really a strange place to put it. Okay, I've got, I'm just putting in a couple of rocks here. The shoreline is really rocky down here uh, in this place. If you could get down here, I'm not exactly sure if where these are at, you could actually get down to the shoreline um, to, uh, to, to walk uh, near these. It's it's that uh, it's that hard to get down there. There are a couple of places you can get down and, and get to the water and, and walk out there, but uh, there are few and far between. Okay, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this area over here dry. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna put on some of this greenery. And I'm gonna grab my favorite here. Everybody knows my favorite green, phthalo green. Green. It can mix with this blue. That'll help. Knock it down a lit a bit. Um, CC, oh hi Michelle, Marcia here. Uh, Liza Divine, uh, good to see you, Minty Michelle. <laughs> good to see you, Liza. Glad you're here. Thank you for joining. 
As always, if you've got any questions, please throw them out there. I love, I love answering questions. That's what makes the chat fun. Fun for me. <laughs> if you don't ask questions, you, uh, you put yourself in danger of just listening to me yammer on for the entire, uh, the entire time I'm broadcasting. So it's in your best interest <laughs> to ask a few questions. I'm going to add a bit more yellow here. Put a bit of blue in here. I'm going to add some more yellow in here. Maybe a bit of orange. I don't want this green to be green. Maybe I'll even add in a little bit of dark in through here. Uh, I'm okay with it um, being light here. I'm okay with some of the blue that's on here. If I really want to put my own green, I'll mix some of the cobalt green in here. Maybe a little bit more. I'm okay with a, a bit of the, the thalo, even though it's a strong color. I don't mind that so much. What I don't want to have, and which I, which I do from time to time, which a lot of people do do, do do, is you kind of just put a green on and think green is a green and green is not a green. Green oftentimes is anything but green. And so I just want to have some varied color in here. And it's gonna it's gonna add a little bit of interest to this part of the, the painting. We don't have a whole lot of green on here. Anywhere there's well, there's gonna be a little bit up here, but uh, I just want to have some nice interest here. And in a lot of these places, that green just kind of grows right down over that, that rock face there. Um, <laughs> we love that you love to answer questions. I do. I really do. <clears throat> it, keeps me, um, it keeps me thinking as I'm, as I'm painting. And it's, it's trying to think an answer that really um, helps to uh, propel things forward, I think, in many instances. Okay, I'm going to do something a little funny here. Is this dry? That's not dry. I can't do anything with that yet. Okay, I'll paint this green in the foreground here. I'm going to grab more of this as we come forward. More of this um, cobalt green. And I'll mix a little bit of color with that. Uh, I know you guys have asked me plenty of times in the past why, why I have these colors on my palette. And one of the answers I always give is because these colors um, kind of match the colors that we have out here in, uh, in nature. So this cobalt green is a green that we have around here. It may not be exactly this green, but it's pretty close to this. Let me get some of this ochre in here. That's good. It looks a little garish as I'm looking up on the screen up there. But that's okay. Uh, this area down here in the front is going to need another layer of paint at least anyway, so... Um, so I'm not worried. I just want to get some base color on there. I got a little drop of water just off camera here. And I think what I'm going to try to do at this point is I'm going to look at my ocean, right? And I'm going to try to paint some nice ocean water here. And as I'm looking at the water, I'm just going to try to explain to you what I'm seeing as I'm looking at this. This all back here is actually kind of warm, right? It's got some blue, but it's got some purple to it too back here. By the time we come up around here, yeah, you can see in the reference photo, there's a there's a kind of a wave that's breaking right here, it's, or at least some disturbance in the water. But just up above that, I don't know if you guys can see it, it turns almost this aquamarine or, or kind of a turquoisey color. And we get some of that down here just below this uh, rock feature also. And then up here, it's this steely gray blue. So I'm going to try to do a little bit of that. 
Okay, having described that, now I'm like, oh man, now I've got to actually do that. Okay, so let's do this. I don't want, I don't want my C color to be the same as my horizon color up there. Give me a little bit of this cobalt purple. This is such a lovely color, this cobalt purple that I have here, but it's very subtle. Uh, let's see. ZC says, has or does anyone pronounce phalo like fallow? I asked because I got curious and looked it up. Um, I I do not. I've always thought it was phalo. A long A, a th, th, th sound, and a long A. Uh, but I could be wrong about that. Let's see. Now I need to... I'm going to put something down here. Because I'm going to rest my hand on this for just a second. That might be just a little bit more paint on there than I want. I want this to be light. That's a little better. Let's thin that out even a little bit more. And all I've got to do is keep my horizon line fairly straight up there. Uh, you always say the low A2. Liza, you always say low A2. Like it's thallow green. I've never... That's interesting. Thallow. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Green. Um, uh, Michelle, Michelle, you say you're a bit late, and I may have answered this, but what brushes am I using? That one I can answer, and I can tell you that I am using my King Art brushes. I've been using these for a while now, and I quite rather like them. Now, as I come closer, oh man, that's so, that turquoise here is so strong. Um, I saw these brushes online and just decided to try them out on a whim. So I bought a set of them from uh, King, King, uh, I, don't, oh, I don't know, King Art Company, kingart.com, I don't know. Anyway, you could look up King Art and find where they're from. I don't know what their website is. It's not King Art Brushes. I know that. Uh, and I, I gave them a chance specifically because they have these beautiful pointed round brushes. They're the ones I ended up buying. Um, they are the 90... 20 series of brushes. I'm just I'm going to continue to turn my page. Just find it a little easier to turn the page rather than to turn my brush. I can get a little bit more consistency with how I paint in here. So I'm just going to keep on talking about these brushes while I do this. Um, I ordered them. I ordered a whole set of them. Uh, like I said, these are the 9020 brushes. Where is it at? Here it is. 90. If you can see it, 9020. This one is a size 12. Um, a, these are the point, the 9020 series are the pointed round brushes. And um, I wanted them for two reasons. One is that. Uh, I like pointed round brushes. I, I often use round brushes that um, they just aren't, uh, they seem like they're, they're, they have a blunt end to them. And uh, I didn't, I, I don't enjoy that because so much of what I like to do from time to time is to really get into a tight place with a brush and I don't want to have to, you know, reach over here and get a smaller brush with a, with a different point or whatnot. So anyway, the long and the short is I, I gave these a try. I, I got them in. They have the nice points on them. I um, started using them and I haven't quite stopped because the point has stayed. Um, they've, they've held up wonderfully. 
in the, God, I don't know, four months, five months that I've been using them. And um, uh, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else about them. Oh, yes. And many brushes that are synthetic like this get a hook on the end of them after a while. They just, the, the synthetic ones, the bristles don't always uh, stay straight and it's frustrating because you just bought a new brush, you've used it for a short amount of time, and then it develops this weird hook on the end. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, come to the point that you want it to. It doesn't uh, perform like it did when it was brand new. And I haven't had that issue with these brushes. And so uh, I've, I've kept with them for a while. And so far, they have not let me down. And if anybody else has asked anything, <laughs> I'll get to you in just a second, I promise. All right, I'm going to mix in now a little bit of this Payne's Gray in here. A lot of the shoreline or the water up here on these rocks. You can see these rocks are dark. Uh, I don't know what the the ground is made out of here. Well, I don't know what these rocks are made out of, but lots lots of our shoreline up here is pretty dark. <clears throat> we don't have nice white sand like in other places. And actually, in lots of places, we don't have sand at all. It's just all gravel. Uh, but most of the rocks are dark. We do have quite a bit of sandstone, but the sandstone seems to get ground down and washed away uh, pretty quickly quickly. So I'm just going to pull this through here. And again, I'm using this nice pointed round here. And this, this water can come all the way back here. It's pretty, pretty flat. It's, it is somewhat interesting. This picture was probably taken somewhere around high tide. And I'll tell you that at low tide, this water will be out 40 or 50 feet probably it doesn't it doesn't hang around it comes in pretty far the it's pretty shallow pretty far out the nice thing about that is it does make some really nice tide pools um, let's see Google pronounce uh, Google pronunciation says fallow interesting Ding. So I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Oh man, who's been in charge of telling me to, <laughs> to pronounce it right? Oh, I can't believe I've been saying it wrong. Fallow green, fallow green or fallow blue. Okay, I, I can change probably. Maybe. I can probably say that somewhat differently. I'm going to be really careful here around these grasses. I don't want to get too dark here because I know that I'm going to be uh, painting over this a little bit, and I don't want to go too dark with that. Um, let's see. Let's see. ZC says, stay low. You always thought it was... Stay low. I think the dude was wacky. He probably is. Um, they look like they have a nice point. Uh, they, the, uh, the brushes, they do have a nice point. Even for this big size 12, it's got a very nice point on it. Uh, like I said, I've, I have been very impressed with these brushes. Um, they look like I have a... Let's see, I get out my hairdressing shears and give mine a trim when they get hooked. Oh! I have tried that. Uh, I got actually I've tried that on a lot of brush uh, a lot of brushes when they get a hook. Um, I get a little. Uh, uh, I'm always like, ah, do I really want to do that? I've paid I've paid quite a bit of money for these brushes. Do I want to do that? Uh, and and lots of times I do. Uh, get out and give them a little trim on my own 
harrowing <laughs> trim. Uh, I will admit, shoot, let's throw a little bit of green in here. What do you say? A little bit of green right there. Um, it's always, it always um, injures me a little bit when I have to uh, get the, I use, I use uh, <sighs> clippers. I use like toenail clippers when I do it and um, I try to fan the, I fan them out, I fan all the bristles out. Let's see, fan them all out and then try to clip them in a straight line to get a, a nice big point on mine. How old were you see? I thought the cliff looked like volcanic rock. So that's interesting. I'll get to the how old was I paint the, uh, question here in just a second. Let me, let me kind of make way for a wave here. I'm gonna get some of this color out and then I'm gonna drop in a little extra color at the base of a couple of these. This is just our old rock color here. And I hope I still have a, a just a bit of dampness left. I can do this on a couple of these. Come on. Did I wait too long? I might have waited just a little too long. That's okay. That's okay. We're not going to let that bother us. It's this one out here is going to look great. That one's good. Just some nice color underneath these rocks. A little bit of shadow under there. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. The rest of it, we're going to leave it be. We'll, we'll come back and, um, and hit it uh, when, we, when we finish our water over here. Let's see. How old was I when I started to paint? Are you a daily painter or do you dedicate time weekly? Uh, how old was I when I started to paint? I was, how old was I? 35? 30 something? Um, I was a little late to the game. I've sh I think I've shared the story before. I, I started painting not because I'm some great artist or I wanted uh, to become a great artist or anything, I started painting merely as a way to de-digitalize my life. Come home from work, um, and I wanted to find a hobby that would get me off of the computer, you know, that I could do something, anything, to get away from a screen. And so I started uh, watercolor painting, and I started watercolor painting because, one, it's, um, it's quick to set up. Uh, two, it's quick to clean up when you're done. And in not too, um, not too long of a time, uh, anybody who um, spends the time to learn a few techniques can make a painting that, you know, maybe it's not going to hang in the Louvre or anything, but, you know, it's a, it's a nice painting. Um, I, you know, I've talked, I've talked about it that um, it's my belief that watercolor painting isn't as frustrating as, as people tend to make it out to be. Uh, I, I, you know, I, from time to time, I will amend that to say I understand that it can be frustrating. Um, it's the only medium where you've got to understand the paper, where you've got to understand um, the dampness, you've got to understand humidity in the air around you, you've got to understand your brushes, you've got to understand the different paints that you might be using. Right, so I get that there's a lot, uh, there's a lot to it, and it can be a little daunting, um, but I, I still kind of believe that with a little technique and with a little understanding, we can all do a lot better with our watercolor painting, myself included. Right, there are lots of times I'll paint something and I'll go, oh man, why didn't I do it this way or why did I do it that way or 
I could have done this a little better had I done um, that, this or that. Uh, but I think uh, I think I'm rambling a little bit. Uh, the other part to your question was, am I a daily painter? Uh, or do I set aside a time each week to paint? Uh, I typically set aside uh, Wednesdays at 8 <laughs> to, to paint. Um, I, I used to be a daily painter. I used to paint every day, and I made time every day to paint, and I made sure that I made time every day to paint. I don't do that anymore. Uh, I wish that I could. I can't, uh, partly because of my own expectations of what I can do, and that's on me to manage uh, because a uh, lots of times I want to sit down, I have a vision for how I want to paint something and it starts off not going that way. And then I get a little frustrated and I kind of pull back and I go, okay, hang on. What do I do? And then I, and then I'm onto something else. Um, so that's on me. I, I do paint, uh, three times a week, three, uh, let's see, between three and six hours. Mm, yes, some more, mm, some more tang. I still have the tang kicking around. Uh, I, I paint between three and six hours a week, depending. Uh, if I start uh, thirsty, if I start painting uh, more on Twitch, that number will probably go up a little bit. So uh, there's that. And at this point, I do a lot of paintings that uh, people ask me, hey, could you paint this? And I go, yeah, that's kind of a cool idea. And then I just try to paint that, <laughs> whatever it is. Uh, and that takes me a while. Yes, I'm uh, stalling a little bit, trying to see what's, uh, what's dry and what's wet here. Uh, 35 isn't uh, too late to the game, try 64. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been painting now pretty steadily. Let's see, when I painted every day, let's see, I'll say it this way. When I painted every day, um, I would take my brushes and my paints and everything, and I would uh, paint at my desk at work instead of eating lunch. Uh, when lunchtime rolled around and everybody else headed out to get to their car uh, to do something, I typically uh, headed the other direction and grabbed the cup and got some water and, and started painting away happily um, until, until lunch was over at whatever, you know, whether it be an hour or an hour and something, or whether I was done in a half an hour, I, I stayed and painted and happily, happily did that for a long, long time. Um, I don't do it anymore. My office uh, situation has changed a little bit and I don't have my own office anymore. And kind of everybody now understands that I paint and so I got a really uh, kind of uh, self-conscious about it um, because if I were to take a late lunch or something like that and somebody were to come past and see me painting at my desk during lunch, I didn't want somebody to go, oh my God, you're painting uh, instead of doing work and whatnot. And so, so I kind of uh, got out of painting at lunch a little bit. I should, I should... I could, I could totally start doing it again. I just haven't. Uh, and then for a while at my work, uh, I painted with a group of painters. Uh, we would get together a couple of times a week and go outside and do some plein air painting. And that was kind of fun um, as, a, as an experience. We would all do that. But now it's been years later and I've got many more family obligations than I had before. Uh, I've got 
uh, I guess I've got more to do at my job, so I don't take, and I should know better, but I, I don't take as long of lunches as I used to. I kind of, I kind of work through a lot of lunches. Um, I said maybe I shouldn't do that, but sometimes that's just how things go. Um, I don't know. Did that? I hope that answered your question. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't have dedicated time weekly. I wish I did dedicate time weekly. I took one watercolor class years ago. Uh, not so much because I wanted to uh, learn watercolors, although, you know, there's a lot to taking a class uh, that is kind of desirable. You're, you get out and you meet new people and you see how they paint and you can have some shared experiences with them and you might learn some new techniques and some new how-tos and whatnot. That's always a benefit. But the, the big thing it always did was it made me get out for, God, I don't know how long that class was each week, uh, six hours a week, eight hours a week. I don't know, was that, our, was that my community, local community college? And um, there were, God, how many of us were in that class? There were like 15 or 20 of us in that class. And so from 4.30 to 4.30 to 9.30, 5 to 9, some such thing as, you know, some time scale like that, whatever it was, then I was forced to sit down and paint. And I, I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I had built into my schedule uh, a time to paint every week and there's nothing I could do about it. Oops, sorry. I've got to, I've got to go and paint. I can't, I can't do that. And so it was great. Um, don't work through lunch. Trust me. It's not worth it. Uh, yeah, I try not to, <laughs> I try not to, I guess sometimes I can't, I can't help it. Um, I, my my attitude on the whole thing now is I, I'm I don't worry about it. If if I have to work through lunch at some point, I'll figure another time to take a little bit of time off. Um, Natalie, I'm hoping to find a plein air group uh, once we get moved to the east side of the Phoenix Valley. Now, painting in Phoenix that would be that would be something. I think that would be quite hard not because it's not a beautiful area of the country because it is but it's so dry there is it not boy i would just think that it would it would play havoc with you trying to uh, paint outside uh, having said that people must do it People must do it, so it can't be that bad. I actually am a member of the Watercolor Society here where I'm at. And if I didn't tell you what I'm doing here, I'm just, as you can tell, I'm just adding some shading and definition to these rocks down here. I guess I've kind of decided that the sunlight is going to come from this direction. And so I'm, I'm just trying to shade everything on the back side here. I guess I should say, if I don't say something, <laughs> you guys see me doing something, just somebody, somebody yell at me, what are you doing? There, and these don't, these, this line doesn't have to be straight or anything like that. This can be all jagged and raggedy in there. A hard this time of year when it's over 100 degrees, right? Boy, I know, it, speaking of, you know, um, you know, watercolors being hard or not being hard or, or whatnot, boy, I do notice uh, here in the summer, being right on the ocean, we get a lot of fog. The heat inland really pulls the water uh, in off the ocean and creates this massive fog. So we spend 
a lot of our summer fogged in and, and I have noticed on many occasions in the summer that, you know, I'm going to push this, I'm going to push this out just a little bit here. I want it to look like it's going kind of behind. I didn't draw it that way, but I want to push this behind that a little bit. Uh, I've noticed that in the summer here, when, um, when it's hot inland, right, it can be, oh, 20 miles inland, it can be 40 degrees hotter than it is here in my little uh, corner of the world. I live about a half a mile from the ocean, and um, that fog will come in, and it'll get really thick. So there will be some summer days when I try to paint, and I just I just kind of go, nah, it's nah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, Shannon, you take a picture of what you're painting and take it back inside to finish. That's a, that's a, that's a good move. I do that. I don't do that all the time, but I do do that from time to time. Uh, actually, I should say from time to time, I, I come back in and I find other people's pictures. <laughs> Everybody wants to post their pictures of, of, you know, the, the Pacific ocean and whatnot. So, so often, I don't even bother taking my own pictures. I just go onto Google and, and find, that's too, that's too, I want some, I'm going to mess that up a little bit. That's better. That was too uh, straight in there. I didn't, I didn't like that. Inside, let's see, uh, at Thirsty and Minty, I'm down in Maricopa. Ooh, moving out to Grand Canyon. Um, so I, uh, I, I have relatives that live in St. George, Utah. And I went out there. So that's not far from the Grand Canyon, all things considered. It's, I don't know. I don't even know if it's a hundred miles. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have no cognizance of what the distance is, but in relative terms, it's not very far uh, out to there. And I happened to go to and just an amateur art show in their town. And boy, boy, they have some beautiful. Talk about beautiful vistas. I, I really much, very much enjoy painting um, Zion National Park because it's such a lovely pay, place. But man, they would go out and paint a lot of those red rocks out there in the desert. And whoa, unbelievably beautiful. So um, I'm, I'm kind of actually jealous that you're going to get to do, paint some of that. And I know I say that... Um, completely knowing that a lot of that is just the grass being greener somewhere else. We always like, <laughs> we always like um, what somebody else has and everybody says, man, I live in such a beautiful place. Why don't I just do all paintings of it? But, you know, we all, we all have our own thing. Michael, do you have any watercolor creators that you follow on YouTube? Uh, and I would recommend... Yeah, so I talked about one guy last week, and I couldn't remember his name, that I really enjoy watching, and he's really hard to duplicate. I have tried, I have tried, I promise you, I have tried. His, uh, his painting style is so cool, in my opinion, um, that if I could paint like that, I would, but I can't, so I don't. Uh, his name is Tim Wilmot. Um, he's a British painter, and he paints in uh, his own style. You won't see many people paint like him. You'll see people try to paint like him, but they're not going to pull it off like he does. 
Uh, he's the one that I enjoy watching the most. Okay, I think I've played around with these. I put a couple of layers of paint on each of these. If I need to come back and put some details on some of these rocks, uh, we'll do that in a second. But I think we've. I think I've got these rocks. I need to move on and do some stuff over here, and and get get moving on the rest of this. So, um, actually, it's Gold Canyon there in Phoenix area. Interesting. Yeah, check Tim Wilmot out. He's he's um, super talented. When I used to, I I you know I've I've said it before. I don't watch that much YouTube anymore for watercolor artists. Uh, I tried to watch uh, Angela Fair, right? I think most people know who she is. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I swear, I couldn't do it. She paints so loose and so wide open for so much of her, of her stuff. I couldn't, not that it's not good, not that she doesn't do a wonderful job. I couldn't wrap my head around most of it. I had to watch, or I had to stop watching her. Um, I used to ride... The bus into work, when I was doing a lot of plein air painting and, and drawing, um, uh, and, and I like him because he's got uh, this really loose style to his plein air painting. I don't know, you know, if you, if you were to ask me would I ever buy one of his works, I don't even know if they are for sale. Um, but I used to watch Teo... Tae-chi? Teo, I don't know, Teo. Um, he, he, his drawing style is fantastic. He just gets out and just draws and draws and seemingly um, he draws with a fountain pen and doesn't care about making mistakes and, and just goes at it. And that's something to watch. Um, but his color mixing is a bit odd. Let's see. Charles Evans. Yeah, I like Charles Evans. I think Charles Evans. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Zeph Zephyrine. The white. Um, what paper am I using? It looks kind of cheap. It is kind of cheap paper. It's Strathmore, I believe. It's Strathmore five, uh, 500. Strathmore 400 series. Um, uh, I bought a, a lot of this years ago. And uh, I bought it in big block or big sheets, and I took it to work. I have I used to have a big paper cutter, and I cut my own paper down, and used it that way. And so I have all a bunch of sheets now, down from a two foot by three foot um, notepad into these nine by twelve um, sheets of paper that that are good for doing just you know little little things like this. Louise de Massey. Uh, Louise is good. She's funny. Surprisingly funny. I haven't seen one of her videos in quite a long time, but I do remember her being quite good. Steve Mitchell, uh, uh, Steve Mitchell gets a bit too much into the weeds, I think. He, he's super talented. He's been a, an artist and an illustrator for a long time, if I'm remembering right. Um, he's the mind of watercolor and he, he gets into things a little too much. I think sometimes for my taste, Oh, why am I doing this? I need to add some additional colors on going down this hill. I don't need to start adding details to this hill. Uh, Lizzie, you think Strathmore 400 is quite good. I'm not knocking it. I'm really not knocking it. I've used it before. What, before I switched to, uh, cotton paper, uh, it was almost exclusively what I used. It's a good hard wearing paper. It will, it stands up to a lot. Its only limitation, from what I can see of it, is that it is a, a wood based paper, and that means that the starch in the paper is not going to do its job like it would in a um, cotton 
based uh, paper and you'll get some additional running. Uh, here's a good example of it right here. I had a little water on here. I tried to wipe this back and the color that was here just keeps pushing out and pushing out and now has made that big tide line right there that really I can't do a whole lot with at this point. Um, it's not, it's, it doesn't, that doesn't mean the paper is no good. That doesn't mean you can't use it to, to make a nice painting with. It's just one of the limitations of the paper. And, and if you know that going in to use it and can make use of that, then, then there's no problem with the paper in, in my Humble opinion. I, 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 I don't try to tell people. I guess I've, I've made the case before that you should use cotton paper. Um, but uh, in general, if you, as long as you know right, the paper that you're working with, that's the paper you should be using. It doesn't matter uh, anything else about it. If, if you like it, it works for you, use it. Okay, before, uh, while I'm waiting for my little cliffside here to dry up uh, and I can put some more details on here, I'm going to put some details on our rocks over here. And I've got a couple of lines drawn in like, like so for the tops of some of these. I don't for others. I'm just going to wing it. And I like to try to put on a few details in the direction that I want this rock to be, right? So if I want there to be a depression in this rock here and a couple of lines coming off, well, if I angle these lines just so, then it, it should give the illusion that this is a little bit more rounded, right? And I need a little bit grayer mixture and probably I need to drop down a brush size. Steve can get technical, but his style is fun. Steve can get really technical. Steve Mitchell can get really technical. He really does. Um, Shannon, Shannon, you like Teo too. He's great for learning plan area and urban sketching. He's, he's wonderful with that. And I'm always fascinated with Teo and he does it in a, in a nice, um, light-hearted style. But I'm always fascinated that he does all of his drawings um, in, you know, one sitting with a fountain brush, makes no mistakes, or if he makes mistakes, we'll never know about him. Uh, he just, he just sits down and does it like, like it's no big deal. See, maybe this has got a little bit of green growing on the top of this over here somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, Teo, Teo just, he, he just kind of goes and, and does it. It's, it's amazing to watch him. Um, I'm trying to think who else have I watched? Oh, I know Charles Evans. Somebody said Charles Evans. He has... I'm thinking of the right guy. He has the worst looking um, palette. He, is he the guy who never ever cleans his palette? I can't, I can't watch him. I'm sure he's a wonderful artist. <laughs> I've no doubt, but oh my God, his, if he's the one I'm thinking of. So I'm just, I'm putting on some, Let's see, if I put a line, if I put a vertical line, here's the, the fun thing. If I put a vertical line, that's a crack, right? That's a deep crag in that rock. If I put a, a horizontal line, it's a striation. That's an age line on that, on this. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a mixture of these and a few dots here and there. Right, enough to give some interest over here, not enough to provide any real detail. 
Yes, ZC, you're saying he is the one who never cleans his, his palate. Oh, oh, that drives me nuts. I can't. Oh, I can't. It's so unnerving to watch him use that palette that's just, it's like gray, the whole thing. <laughs> oh, they need to change their, don't, people who don't change their water. Oh, I, oh. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I am a bit snobby about some things, but I'm like, oh my God. Come on, you gotta. You gotta, you gotta do something. That's horrible. Oh, it's so bad. Uh, let's see who else. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm really. I'm. I'm not. It's not that I'm not willing to to say who I watch or anything. I just. Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I still watch, I still watch Bob Ross. I grew up watching Bob Ross. I still watch Bob Ross on YouTube and on Twitch. He's always on. He works now more than after he's died. As you see, he, he can paint. Um... Oh, you know who, uh, you know who I like who, and you never hear him say anything. And that's kind of nice. I mean, not that it's not that I wouldn't listen to him or anything, but, uh, watercolors by Shibayashi, uh, old Japanese man, Bob Ross. Bob Ross is classic. I will always like watching Bob Ross. There's something about him. He's so gentle and so understanding and so just easy going that you gotta love watching Bob Ross. You can't not. Um, like I said, I I grew up watching Bob. I would come, I was I was only allowed to watch an hour of TV a day. But if I got home from school, growing up, but if I got home from school. Before my parents got home from work, I could sneak in some extra TV. And oftentimes, that extra TV that I snuck in was Bob Ross on PBS. We only got a couple of channels. We didn't get a whole lot of channels. I grew up out in a country where there was a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> for the most part. Uh, but I could get the PBS channel, and, and Bob was always on, so I watched a lot of Bob Ross. And I, and I will never regret it he's so he's so good all right i'm just going to drop in a few lines here and there this is going to give this cliff face got to do some verticals and some horizontals it's going to give this cliff face some uh definition here if i kind of turn it a little bit like that you can see it now even with just a couple of lines it comes back and goes over Right, that's all. That's all I'm doing here. Natalie, you didn't even get um, PBS. Oh, you missed out. Actually, I don't. <laughs> I say that I'm like I don't remember watching anything other than Bob Ross on PBS. <laughs> I think that was about it. Like I said I didn't watch. I didn't watch too much TV growing up. I still don't watch. I, I listen to a lot of books on tape. Books on tape. Audiobooks. Now. And. And a lot of podcasts. I'll talk podcasts with you if you want. <laughs> watch a lot of podcasts. Uh, or listen to a lot of podcasts. I just don't, I don't think I have the, the patience really to sit in front of a TV all day and, and, and watch that. All right, I've got a couple of lines on here. I could add some more. It's important to get some from both sides. I've got to get some from the end over there. I've got to get some from, let me give a little bit of color back here. This should push that back just a little bit. 
right now we're kind of getting to the end of this we haven't done a whole lot we're already getting to the end of this right i've got my cliff face here it's got some lines on it we've got some detail here just that little bit of detail um really makes this actually makes it look more like a circle now i'm really happy with the way this looks like a with a circle um i think what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go back to my little bit bigger brush and i'm gonna clean a little area out here give me a little towel There we go, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mix a little bit of my color. So, so my water was um, Payne's gray, cobalt blue, and a little bit of this turquoise. Throw that in there. A little bit more Payne's gray. I want this to be a little bit darker. We dropped a little bit of that green in there. That'd probably be okay too. And now I want to. This is where I'm. I can completely screw this up. Uh, does anybody have any more abstract or contemporary painters that you recommend? That one, Minty, I'm out on. <laughs> I'll just tell you, I don't, I don't do a whole lot with uh, abstract painters. I hope somebody else can help you with that, but that one I'm not going to be able to help you with. Let's see it. And I'm going to kind of come in here and paint... Now I'm doing it, I'm doing it kind of here because uh, this is where this, whoop, this is kind of where my white is for my wave. I, I know on the, the reference photo, it's kind of pushed out a little bit more. So it wouldn't be right here exactly, but for me, I'm going to put it kind of here. And I'm just going to kind of try to break over the top of some of this and just get some nice broken lines here. Get nice and clean brush. And I want, if you look right where that, where that wave kind of breaks, it gets dark on the shore side of it. So I want to try to make it a little bit darker over here. See, a little bit of water to pull that out just a little bit. And I've got a little bit of a wave going on there. It comes up here just a little bit more. I, I don't need to go back into this whole thing, but just this area, I think, will give us the impression of a little bit of a wave here. And if we didn't get anything good on a reflection down here with any of these rocks, we can put them on right now, now that we've got a little bit of wet. There we go. And I think I can, I can get this wet out here a little bit real quickly and just dribble in. A little bit of color here and there it should so I can do I can get a little bit more here too look at this or the brown get a little bit more color right around those and that should look Somewhat wave-ish. <laughs> Somewhat wave-ish. I'm like the worst wave painter. I live right by the ocean, and my waves always, always look weird and funny. Someday I am going to sit down and learn how to paint waves. There's my wave coming in right there. <laughs> That's working nicely with the water. It's not, you know, it's it's not, maybe it's not the biggest, you know, wave to break in there or whatnot. And these ones you can't see, it's on the other side, but that's that's okay. 
Uh, so the last thing we really have to do on this, and we've got a nice little painting here. Uh, let's do something with this um, in the front here. And we need to make this uh, a bit bolder. Oh, you know what? You know what I have back here? If you look on that reference photo, you see some little people sitting way up there on the hill. Standing up. They're actually standing up there on the hill. They look really tiny. So I thought, just to give it a frame of scale, I've got them way up here. I'm going to... Um, <laughs> you, you haven't heard of so many of the artists that everybody follows. <clears throat> I haven't heard of some of the artists that everybody follows. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, let's see. I think we can do this without much detail at all. Right? Uh, let's see. I'm going to do... Give them some red or some purple or something here. This is maroon, perline, and I think if I can set my hand on there. Probably gonna look like three bumps <laughs> standing up there. Somebody's gonna look at this and go, that definitely does not look like people at all. Let's see, I'm gonna give them blue jeans here. Well, they're standing too much together. I, that's that's one thing. Let me put another person in here. There you go. That's a little better. <laughs> Got some people standing up there now. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Back to the back to the real painting. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my large brush and I've got this green here that's been sitting here now. I'm gonna mix some gamboge into it. I bought some new colors. I so if you're looking at my palette going, wow, those colors look uh, the colors in the palette look like there's there's a lot there. It's because there is. I just got some new ones. So I filled up my palette again. Should I, I have to say, um, two weeks ago, was it two weeks ago, some people put some money in Super Chat and, and gave me a donation through PayPal, and I took that money that I got, and I went out and bought uh, this paint with it. Um, Uncle S 60 was one of them. Uh, I don't remember who the other person was. If you're here tonight and I'm missing you, <laughs> please say something. I, I'm not trying to, uh, to, to miss out on you, but I do want to say thank you <laughs> for that. It's helped me get some, some new paints. That's wonderful. New paints are always a good thing. <clears throat> A little blue in here. Oh, Peter Sheeler, Shannon, Peter Sheeler, good call. Peter Sheeler's another one of those guys who I don't. He doesn't ever say anything, does he? But he just sits down and kind of does does his thing and draws. I haven't God, I haven't even thought of him in a long time. They're normally simple drawings and. Painted really well. <laughs> if I'm remembering, is that is that um, Peter Sheeler? I think I think that's Peter. I actually think I started seeing him more on Instagram than I ever did on on YouTube. I'm trying to think. You know, it's all written. Yeah, he doesn't say anything, right? Am I? I'm thinking of the right guy. Line of yeah, Peter Peter Sheeler. Yeah. 
Let's see. I'm monkeying around with some colors here. His palette is a gun wrapper. Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. Um, you like Peter Sheila too. Gum wrapper. Yeah, he... See, I'm just going to drop in... While this is wet, I'm going to drop in some darker colors here, and then I'm going to... I'm going to grab some thicker paint. Paint out towards the edge here, and with a smaller brush, I'm going to get... I have these liner brushes that I got from... Well, where is this? Uh, Zen Art. At one point, I had a lot of Zen Art Supplies stuff. <laughs> Folks, we can actually talk. I had a, a number of Zen Art things, and they make they make fine stuff. I'm not gonna say any of their stuff is bad or or anything like that. It's all fine stuff. Um. They sent me these, and I tried them out, and they were fine. I never, I never really did a review of them because it wasn't long after that that I, that I bought some other brushes that I liked more, and they kind of got mad at me that I didn't do a review right away of their brushes, and maybe I should have. Um, so they quit kind of sending me stuff, <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. They they need to have somebody there who's doing just their stuff, and it wasn't me. I was more interested in finding stuff that kind of worked exactly for what I was doing, rather than trying to to paint stuff that somebody else wanted me to to show off their stuff. If that makes any sense, and uh, so I do feel a little bad. I. I send them a note every now and again and go, hey, still still use your stuff or I just used it in a video or whatnot. All right, there we go. Some simple grass. God, I look up here. Now, maybe it's my monitor. I look up here and uh, it really looks like it's got a lot of fallow green in it. Ah, look at that. Um, but when I look down on my paper... Um, down there, it's so much more muted. Uh, way more muted. I'm hoping that's just my monitor. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's about all I've got for this one. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a review. Right, when I'm done, I kind of like to step back and take a look at how I've done or what I've done and see if... Um, if I like it or if I don't like it. <laughs> uh, Natalie says, you never bought opera because you worry about how fugitive uh, you've heard it is. I have some um, opera pink that came in my Holbein set, probably. Um, I don't think I've ever used it. <laughs> it's such a bright pink. Oh, I might have some in my... In my Daniel Smith set too. I don't know. I've no. I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, Kathy, you like the guy in Watercolor Cafe. Uh, Watercolor Cafe is Eric something, I believe. Yeah, he's good. Well, he's a he's a graphic artist too. Uh, Steve um, Steve Mitchell is, and so is so is he in Watercolor Cafe. I'm gonna sign this down here. Um, okay, so I'm looking at this, and I like, well, here's, the, here's some of the things I like. Uh, I like the way, I love the way that this water comes and wraps around in here. This dark, this band of dark comes and wraps around in here. It really helps to separate um, this big pillar and these pillars from the ones behind it. This this band of dark that goes in there, I really worried about that when I drew this because as I drew it, I went, well, it does look kind of flat back there. I don't know, I don't know how that's going to play out, but that band of dark 
really helps. And I'm looking at the water. And I think the water is wonderful. It does have this beautiful purpley effect out here. And you come in and the turquoise is just a bit in here. And then, you know, the water's just kind of lapping up in the ocean today. It's a really soft day in the ocean. And this reflection down here and down here, even though it's really light in these areas, you don't notice it. But this dark and this dark are a beautiful reflection of these rocks down here. I, I really think that's nice. And I think I did a good job of separating all of these. I had to go back a couple of times. I'll admit, maybe I could have done a better job in a single layer of paint. But, but this stands apart from that. And this stands in front of these. And this is definitely in front of that, which is definitely in front of that. It really all helps to give some really nice depth and push all of these back into that painting. Um, we're, we're looking down on this from, from such an angle that it could really start to look flat. So I'm glad that that didn't, didn't turn out that way. And I <laughs> kind of like my little people up here. <laughs> I don't put people in, in paintings too much. They're, they're completely ridiculous up there, but I like them. Um, let's see. Natalie says, I love the painting, but I think it might benefit from a couple of the rocks leading off the right side. Oh, off here. Yeah. And if you look at that reference photo, yeah, there are other rocks out here. I just eliminated that just for the sake of time and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, I could, th there totally could be some more out here. There, there's a lot of things that could have been done on here, but for a, for a, you know, simple painting that has taken, where are we at? An hour and 22 minutes. Um, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Let's see. Uh, Michelle says, great painting. Thank you, Minty. Just experiment and try using comp uh, complementary colors, browns, things that will tone it down for you. Right? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, Shannon, love the dark water line too. Yeah, right through here. That really helps um, uh, give that uh, depth to the painting. Um I was waiting to see how you uh, how you go with that. I was looking for inspiration for the foreground grass too. Uh, the foreground grass, you know, if you look at the at the reference photo, it's just a bunch of grass that's laying down. And I didn't. I, I wanted this color to be a little bolder. Maybe I, I would even go over it with another layer if I were going to do this again, um, and then and then make these even a bit darker. Uh, but I'm happy with it. I, I love that there's this yellowish bit back here and so a little bit of brown in here. And they just kind of wisp out over the edge, which is which if you're walking along the trail, is kind of how it looks when you see it. <laughs> you like the people. Uh, ZC, really nice. Thank you. Do you ever scratch into the watercolor for grass? I, I don't. I tried it once and um, it didn't. I've tried it a few times. I should say I've tried it once. Um, and I never quite get it at the right timing. It's, I seem to get a little early or seem to get a little late. I get distracted doing other things. Uh, so I just haven't applied the time to sit down and figure out exactly when I need to scratch in for some highlights there. Uh, I, I use this for my white highlights instead of scratching. If I wanted to highlight some of these blades of grass, it's just a white gel pen. I think I've got two of them over here. Yeah, Sino, and I don't know what this one is, Gel Roller. Uh, between the two of them, I can usually get a, a pretty good line of, of white on there. So instead of scratching, I'll do that. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 I like to be really nice. Do you ever, uh, do you ever scratch? Okay. The painting's awesome. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, beautiful colors. You did a great job. The depth stands out. Thank you. Uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. Um, Shannon, you've never had <laughs> luck scratching highlights. I, I know it's funny. You'll watch somebody online do it and they'll just go, Oh, you just take your fingernail and, and they'll do it. And then somehow it turns out right. And it's never worked like that for me. Um, uh, that's all I've got for everybody this evening. Thank you so much for joining me here, uh, this Wednesday in my studio, here in my garage. Very much enjoyed having you all here. Um, I'll put a poll up next week uh, to see what we might want to paint. I don't know what uh, that's going to be. I um, have to think about it. 
done birds. It won't be birds. Uh, it might be a landscape, might be some flowers of some sort or whatnot. Um, I'll figure something out. Um, down below, links to uh, my webpage. I just sent out a newsletter to everybody a couple of days ago. That's a subscriber over there with some things I have coming up. Uh, links to Discord over there. There's a new challenge painting for the month of June. Uh, and of course, if you still want to get in on any previous months, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you want to post what you've done for that challenge, uh, I'll take a look at it. If you want me to make a critique of it, I'm happy to do that too. Or if you just want to do it for fun, that's fine. Uh, links down below to, I believe, my coffee account. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, PayPal down there. If you want to help donate and keep the studio running. If you don't, that's fine too. I'm glad to have you here uh, joining me on uh, every Wednesday. Uh, and I think that's all I have. Good night, everybody. Great seeing you in the studio again. We'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye.